So if we have a system that can oscillate, and then we pl apply a force that varies periodically to that system, then the system is forced to oscillate at the same frequency as the force we are applying, which is called the driving frequency. And so the amplitude of this forced oscillation will increase if the driving frequency matches one of the normal mode frequencies of the oscillator. And this is called resonance. So imagine you are pushing someone on a swing. Now if you push them at the same time in their cycle, say every time they reach the bottom on their way up, you give them a push. Well then they'll start swinging higher and higher. The amplitude of the swinging will increase. Whereas if you just push at random times, you know, if you push them when they're on their way down, then you'll stop their swinging or decrease their amplitude. So the force has to vary periodically with the same frequency as the oscillating system's normal modes. And so now we're going to look at more at the interference of two waves. So say we have two sources that are emitting identical waves at the same time. Now we want to see whether they will interfere constructively or destructively at a certain point. So that depends on how long these two waves travel to get to this point. So if the distances traveled by the two waves are the same, then they'll arrive in phase. You know, they'll be at the same point in their wave cycle. So they'll add constructively. And they'll also add constructively if the distance traveled between them differs by a whole wavelength. For example, let's say this wave on top travels two whole wavelengths longer than this one on the bottom to get the, this point. Then they'll interfere constructively. Because say, you know, they'll both arrive at, you know, they'll both be a crest or they'll both be a trough. You know, they'll be at the same point in their wave cycle. If the distance traveled differs by a whole number of wavelengths. Whereas if the distances traveled differ by a half integer number of wavelengths, you know, one half wavelength, three halves, five halves, etc., then they'll arrive out of phase and add destructively. So say this guy travels one half of a wavelength more than the bottom wave, then at when they both reach this point, say this wave on the bottom could be at a crest, while this wave at the top could be at a trough. So they'll add destructively and cancel each other out. So one instance of the interference of sound waves is called beats. So if we have two waves with the same amplitude but slightly different frequencies and then they overlap, they'll add to produce a wave that has a varying amplitude. And so you can see the amplitude of this, w this wave that results when these two waves add, the amplitude varies between this zero and a maximum amplitude. So, you know, the wave here will vary in loudness. You know, when the amplitude is small, it'll be quiet and then it'll get louder and louder until it's at a maximum amplitude. Then it'll get softer and softer, then louder and softer. So this wave has a varying amplitude, which is you know, called beats. So we can determine what's called the beat frequency. Now, the beat frequency is not the normal frequency of this wave, you know, how we normally define frequency of a wave. The beat frequency is the frequency with which the amplitude varies. So say for example, you take a one second interval and you count, you know, you hear two loud spots. Then the beat frequency would be two hertz. So the beat frequency when two waves overlap, you just subtract the frequencies of the waves. Where of course, FA is the wave with a higher frequency. 
since the beat frequency can't be negative. That wouldn't make sense. So the Doppler effect is something that occurs when the source of a sound and someone listening to that sound are moving relative to each other. You know, when you, for example, when you see a fire truck with its siren on going towards you and then going away from you. You know, the pitch of that siren will change as it moves closer and then further away. So say we have a listener, this guy, which is moving towards a stationary source of sound. So this sound source is emitting sound with a frequency and a certain wavelength, which is given by you know, the wave speed divided by the frequency. So relative to the listener, the wave is actually moving faster. Since, as you can see, the wave is moving this way, and the listener is running towards it. So it'll, the waves will reach the listener faster than if the guy was just standing here stationary. So the speed of the wave relative to the listener is the wave speed plus the velocity of the listener. So that means the frequency that the listener hears is different depending on this relative velocity. So overall we get this equation. So as you can see, if the velocity of the listener is positive, which means he is moving towards the source, then the frequency he hears will be larger than the actual frequency of the sound. And that's because he's like running into all of these sound waves that are coming towards him. Whereas if he's moving away from the source, then the VL will be negative and the frequency he hears will be lower than the actual frequency of the sound because he's running away from the sound waves. Now we can generalize this equation to include the cases where the source of the sound is moving as well. And we can do that by looking at how the wavelength of the sound will vary on both sides of the source. As you can see, if the source is moving this way, you know, the, the sound waves on this side will be clumped together, whereas on the other side of the source, the sound waves will be more spread apart. So the wavelengths here will be longer than over here. So overall, for the Doppler effect, we get this equation. And this includes both a moving sound, uh, moving sound source and a moving listener. And it's important to note that in these equations, the positive direction of these velocities is always the direction from the listener to the source. So you can think of it as if the listener is always on the left and the source is always on the right. So you can see if the velocity of the source is positive, which means it's moving away from the listener, then the frequency that the listener hears will be less than the actual frequency of the sound. Because ex as you can see, if the listener is standing here and the source is moving away from him, you know, he'll receive the sound waves that are more spread out. With the, the low frequency of these waves is lower. Whereas if the s source of the sound is moving towards the listener, then Vs will be negative and the listener will hear a higher frequency. Because as the source moves this way, the sound waves over here will clump up together and they'll all hit the listener with a shorter frequency, I mean a higher frequency.